Good day everyone. I have some awesome vintage technology to show you today. Here I have two early digital cameras. They are both Sony Mavica digital cameras. This one is a model MVC FD71 from 1998. And this one is a model MVC FD75 from 2001. What's so special about these cameras and all the Sony Mavica line of digital cameras is that these use floppy disks as their storage medium. These have an actual floppy drive on them and the photos are recorded to a floppy disk, a standard MS-DOS formatted floppy disk which you can stick right in your computer to view the photos. That's pretty darn cool. So these two cameras I have here were uh, given to me by my friend Neil. I really appreciate it. Neil is a camera collector. These two cameras, as you can tell just by looking at them, are very similar. They are indeed almost identical in functionality. So I'm going to put the newer one aside. And uh, this video, this older one's going to be the focus of this video. Although I will touch on the newer one because there are a few differences between these two. I'll give a brief history of digital cameras. Um, you know, when digital cameras came around uh, in the mid-90s and they started gaining popularity in the late 90s, there were a few different ways that digital cameras stored their photos. Um, today it's very much uh, the same for most of them. Uh, just about all digital cameras use SD cards. I think there might still be uh, a few on the market, it's, uh, notably professional ones that use compact flash cards. But uh, it was a bit more varied um, back in the early days of digital cameras. Um, most of them, uh, up until about the early or mid 2000s, used compact flash cards. Some of them had internal memory, one or two megabytes of internal memory, some of them probably had more and uh, a few digital cameras uh, had their own proprietary memory cards specific just to those cameras and with these cameras that had internal memory or used compact flash cards uh, the only way to get to the computer and you know nobody owned a compact flash reader for their computer back in those days so the only way to get the digital photos from your camera to your computer was through a serial port. Your camera would come with a serial cable that connected to the computer. A couple of them back in this day had USB, but up until the early 2000s it made way more sense to provide a serial cable than a USB cable because lots of people at this time still had com either computers that didn't have USB ports or uh, computers that, you know, ran Windows 95, which wouldn't have very good USB support. Well, Sony answered this, and it was this reason that digital cameras were very slow to take up. Aside from being, you know, obviously a lot more expensive than film cameras, um, the media for them was very expensive. Compact flash cards were extremely expensive. Um, they had limited storage, you know, compact flash cards were small, um, because of how expensive they were, you could only afford to buy like a 8 or 16 megabyte compact flash card, and uh, it just took a lot of effort to get the pictures onto your computer. Well, Sony answered all these issues with the Mavica series. Um, you know, you might think today when you think of a digital camera that stores its memory or stores its photos on floppy disks you might think oh geez you know that that must have been horrible floppy disks you know they're all slow and small well no it was fantastic this was the best thing since sliced bread storing digital photos on a floppy disk this was amazing it was so much better than anything else on the market floppy disks were cheap they were easily available um, you could buy as many as you wanted because they weren't that expensive, as many as you needed to store all your photos until you got them onto your computer. Every computer had a floppy disk drive. Um, most Macs at this time still had a floppy disk drive. And uh, it made so much sense. A floppy disk was the best way to store photos from a digital camera. And uh, as a result, uh, the Mavica series became the first 
really popular digital cameras. These were the first digital cameras that lots of people got into digital photography with. Digital cameras that took memory cards really didn't get off the ground until uh, basically the end of the Mavica series in the early 2000s because by that time memory cards had gotten cheaper and uh, digital cameras started adopting USB which worked much better than serial and uh, digital cameras that took memory cards became more uh, affordable and a lot more manageable to use but until that time, uh, these were the bread and butter of digital cameras, and these were the first really popular digital cameras. The original Sony Mavicas were introduced in 1997. There were two models, uh, the MVC FD5, uh, which had a fixed zoom lens, and the FD7, which had, I think, a 10x zoom lens. And uh, I believe it was, it's an FD7 that you can see a video of on V Westlife's channel. He didn't go very in-depth into it, but he does have a brief video showing an FD7, I believe it is, on his channel. Uh, this right here, the FD71, was the middle range offering of the second generation of Mavica cameras introduced in mid-1998. Uh, there was the FD51, which had a fixed zoom lens this unit which had a 10x zoom lens and uh, the high-end model was the FD81 which could record video and that's right there were um, uh, members of the Mavica series that could record video onto a floppy um, they could record up to 15 seconds of 320 by 240 resolution video or up to 60 seconds of, I believe, 160 by 120 video. And it's only occurred to me since learning about these cameras, if you've ever, if you, if you ever come across on YouTube a really short video that's just super pixelated, like literally what some would call calculator quality or potato quality or whatever you want to call it, um, I would almost bet that videos of that type that are really short and super low quality uh, were probably recorded uh, on one of these floppy disk Mavica cameras which uh, is pretty neat I'm sure some of them are probably like flip phones and stuff but I wouldn't be surprised if many of them are these cameras so both of these cameras that I have here uh, the photos they take are VGA resolution 640 by 480 um, they are JPEG images um, they have quite aggressive compression. All the Sony Mavica cameras had quite aggressive compression. Um, later Mavicas did get higher resolution. Um, first, uh, they got XGA resolution, 1024 by 768. Uh, later ones hit the megapixel mark. Uh, later still, Sony came out with ones that were 1.3 megapixel. Um, some of them were 1.6 megapixel, but they were upscaled. It was a 1.3 megapixel sensor, and it used uh, electronic interpolation to get 1.6 megapixels. And then the, the last final uh, Mavicas uh, were 2.1 megapixels. And the last lineup of the floppy disk Mavicas uh, were in 2002. And there were two models, the MVC FD100, which was, I believe, 1.3 megapixels, and the FD200, which was 2.1 megapixels. Um, about around, I think, 1999 or 2000, Sony introduced digital cameras that used a miniature CDE. Um, they were also under the Mavica name, and they used a, a mini CD to record pictures. And... Uh, those went on, I think, until 2003 or 2004. But when I, for the purposes of this video, whenever I just say Mavica, I'm talking about just the floppy disk units. So yeah, um, the Mavica came to a close in uh, 2002 with the last floppy disk models. Uh, reason being, not only were memory cards becoming popular, um, but they were becoming much more convenient to use than ones that took, that took floppy disks. Um, the higher resolution Mavicas, um, I can tell you the ones that record 2.1 megapixel images fit no more than four pictures to a floppy. And uh, the compression on those pictures were extremely aggressive. Very, very high compression on those images just to get four of them 
onto a floppy. So it became nonsensical to try and improve the Mavica anymore because the limits of the 1.4 megabyte floppy disk had been pushed just as far as it could go. So uh, it only made sense to end the line there. Many of the later Mavicas had memory stick slots, Sony's proprietary uh, memory card format. So Sony introduced Mavicas that had a memory stick slot and I believe they were advertising them as memory stick cameras and the floppy disk drive was more of a bonus. Um, and in fact, uh, I did read that the Mavicas with memory stick slots actually used different levels of compression um, based on whether you used a memory stick or a floppy. Um, images recorded onto memory stick had less compression and looked much better than images um, recorded onto a floppy disk. I have looked at many test photos of the later Mavicas, the higher resolution ones, and while I don't know if said images were recorded to floppy or memory stick, I will say that they look very good. Um, they're very good quality images. Um, you know, aside from the smaller resolution, when you're looking at it, you know, downscaled to fit on your screen or whatever, as far as I can tell, um, the later Mavicas don't have any worse image quality than a modern digital camera, really. Um, they took very good pictures. Um, again, I don't know if that was floppy or memory stick, but to be honest, what I'd like to do someday is get one of the higher resolution uh, Mavicas. Um, that would be quite cool. I'd like to get at least uh, a 1.3 megapixel one, and I'd like to get one that has uh, a video recording capability. Even though it's a practically useless feature, it'd be cool to have nonetheless. So I do plan on someday, um, because these were so popular, the first really popular digital cameras, eBay is swamped with these. There are so many of these on eBay. If you want a Mavica camera, you can literally get one on eBay for less than 10 bucks shipped if you look enough. Um, most of them untested because the people selling them have n neither floppies or uh, the batteries that these take or a charger for the battery or whatever. Um, but yeah, eBay is swamped with Mavicas. Um, so if you want to take a chance at getting one that's not tested, you can get them super duper cheap. And if you want to pay a bit more, you can still get one that's been fully tested. It'll cost more, but still quite a good price. So since I have two of these, um, I don't plan on keeping both of them. And so it was with uh, Neil's permission and blessing. I'm actually going to eventually sell this one here. And uh, I think I'll actually use the money that I get from this one to buy another one, buy one of the newer higher resolution ones, and then I can review that for YouTube. That'd be pretty sweet.